Hey there, how you doing today? Hope you're doing well. I'm Valerie and today we will be um, taking a look at some things I found at my local thrift store. So I have two candle holders and this wooden tray. I believe they're called Lazy Susans. And here are the prices if you're interested in those. Um, the one candle holder was a little bit pricey I think for a uh, thrift shop, but it was so cute and had so much character that I paid the $6 because if you like it and it's kind of unique like this, I say go for it. Now if you didn't catch that beginning title card that said also a pillow DIY, we're doing a pillow DIY today. Just wanted to show you how easy it is to make a cute pillow for your home. I bought these pillow covers off of Amazon. They were very affordable and I will be using Chalk Couture to add a design. Um, so basically, if you don't know what Chalk Couture is, they are reusable stencils. They have an adhesive backing and um, they also sell ink that you can use on fabric and you heat set it and then you are good to go. So right now all you see me doing is just kind of playing around with the stencils to see how I want to place them and then I will get into the ink part. So here's the ink I was talking about by Chalk Couture. You can also use um, chalk paints and do something similar. I've seen that done before. Um, so for this project all you're going to do is take a squeegee and just smooth it across your stencil. Now I do want to note, I didn't get video footage of this, I do have something in the pillow covering so that it doesn't transfer to the back of the case. So make sure you put cardboard or you can use it at one of those thin cutting mats. Um, I'm actually using a product by Chalk Couture that's made for this, but you could really use any of those other options as well if you're just using the chalk paint. Um, so like I said before, we're just gonna keep smoothing this over until our stencil is covered. Alright guys, this is the best part when you peel back the stencil. It is just so fun and satisfying. Whoops, got cut off there. So fun and satisfying is what I was saying. Look at that. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I just think it's super fun. Now we're just going to continue on with the rest of the design and then I will show you how I fixed a mistake in the end. Right, my friends now here is where I messed up and I'll tell you why I just was not patient enough and I didn't wait for the ink to completely dry and I thought I can get that insert out without messing up the ink it'll be fine well I was wrong but it's okay because like I said I will fix it Hope you enjoyed seeing me wrestle with that mat. It really is great because it has a sticky backing, so that helps you get your design on nice and smooth, but it does make it tricky to get out, but we, we got it done. Um, now you see me replacing that insert, which is not heat resistant, with parchment paper, so that when I heat set the design, I'm not gonna melt my insert into the pillow cover because that might not be so easy to fix. Um, so that's what I'm doing now, and I will also place a piece of parchment on top of the design. I don't know if you really have to do that. I just do it as an extra precaution. All right, finally moving on. So this is just a little ironing mat that I have and I will be using a Cricut Easy Press to set my design. You can also use an iron. So don't think that you can't do this if you don't have an Easy Press. You can use an iron. It's just gonna take you a little bit longer, but no big deal. If you don't do projects like this a lot, then there's no reason to go out and buy an Easy Press, even though I really do love mine. 
Now I did a little fast forwarding because a video of me just holding down my Cricut Easy Press for however long I set this for, I think it was about a minute or so, would be a little bit boring. So fast forward to this part where I am flipping over the pillowcase and setting it from the back. Okay, we'll fast forward a little bit. Won't show you all this part. Skipping ahead. If you look closely in the ampersand, you will see that I have a smudge of blank black ink and there are a few other spots on the pillowcase where I was just not patient and removed that insert too soon. Um, what I decided to do was take some chalk paint and just do a little freestyle design and hide those little ink spots. And you know what? I actually like this so much better than when it was just the plain black and cream color of the pillowcase. So sometimes accidents turn into happy little mistakes. I think Bob Ross said that or something similar. But in any case, I really love the pillow. I think this was a nice touch. Shall we get back to those thrift store finds? All right, let's do it. So first things first, always clean your pieces. So you'll see I use some crud cutter, spray it on, wipe it really well, and then you're gonna wanna rinse off that crud cutter so that whatever you apply to your wood will stick. So that's what I'm doing here. If you like cleaning videos, then here you go. Did you see how yucky and gross that was? All right, so now we're gonna rinse with some nice warm water. So the lakes of the Lazy Susan had these little um, feet on them. They're actually kind of dry rotted and not very pretty, so I am just removing them. If I were be going, if bleh, let me start over. If I were going to be sitting this on a flat surface, I would replace them with something else. However, I will be putting this on a chest in my living room and it actually has some wood slats that um, will allow this to still sit level. So I'm not gonna replace it with anything at the moment. If I change my mind and put it somewhere else, then I'll probably add some little wood feet to it. Um, also, there was a little crack and um, it just made the leg a little bit wobbly, so I'm applying some wood glue, working that in, and then I use a very professional way to hold it up. I shove that little hammer under the leg just to prop it up a little bit, and then I let this dry overnight. And it worked pretty well, so maybe there's a better way to do it. This is how I did it, and it worked. And yes, I was a little heavy handed, so I am removing the excess, otherwise I would probably have a big bubble of glue. Not what we want, so just taking a rag and wiping off that excess. Also didn't want it to somehow glue the legs to the tray and then it wouldn't spin or something terrible like that because you know, my woodworking skills only go so far.
This is my test swatch of the white paint that I'm going to use. I anticipated some bleed through and I was correct. So that just means the tannins of the wood are pulling through the paint that often happens with um, white paints. So to remedy that, I will be using Zinzer Bin Primer as my first layer of defense and that will prevent the bleed through. Then I move on to this DIY paint in White Swan. I use it often, I love it. And when I am applying this to my Lazy Susan, I am just kind of like painting every which way because I really want some texture in this tray top I thought it would just add some more visual interest and go with the style of decor I have in my home a little bit better so if you're wondering why I'm painting like a crazy woman there's your answer So after my first coat, I decided to add um, this crackle medium by Folk Art. You can get this at Hobby Lobby. I'll link it below. And I'll be using a sponge brush. I can't talk today. Brush to apply it. A little goes a long way. You just want to spread it all over your first coat of paint. Let it dry at least an hour. I actually let mine go, I think, overnight. And then you'll apply your second coat. Now, if you were to choose to use a different color top coat, it looks really cool, actually. I just wanted um, mine all white so you'll still see the texture but it won't stand out as much as if you were to say use like you could even use a black over the white and the crackle would show the white through it's a really neat product so check it out if you haven't seen it before so the crackle medium is all dry and here's me applying the second coat of the DIY paint in white swan all right so we're getting there so the crackle medium and second coat are applied i'll show you a close-up so you can see the texture i decided i wanted a little bit more of a distressed look so i'm just using some sandpaper to distress the edges a bit And here is a close-up of all that yummy, good texture. I just really love how it turned out. A little bit is distressing, not too much, but it has some visual appeal and it's just what I wanted. Now to finish it off, I'm gonna take this in the garage and give it a nice seal with Rust-Oleum um, chalked in matte clear. And um, this is also going on my coffee table, so I definitely want it to be protected. And here it is all set up in my living room. You can see the pillow in the background and our nice lazy Susan with some distressing and our beautiful candle holder. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and have a wonderful day.